The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Kashif Kamran and I welcome you to a session uh, which is on data analytics and the auditor. This is an emerging issue or a current issue for the paper advance audit and assurance. Now, all of the students of advance audit and assurance uh, who are appearing for exams in March 2020 should be familiar that this article data analytics and the auditor uh, which was published by the AAA examining team somewhere in August 2019 has not yet been examined. It was highly probable that this article on data analytics and the auditor uh, will be examined in the September exams, but it was not. Then it was highly probable that it will be examined in the December 2019 exams, but it was not. Now it is the March 2020 exams. Now, is there a chance that the examining team uh, will develop a question on this article uh, in the March 2020 exams? Now, this is a big question. Uh, obviously, uh, this is an open article an unexplored article so again the chance for march 2020 exams is still high so as a student uh, when you are preparing yourself for march 2020 exams you should have a sound idea of this article and you have read the relevant extracts of this article and you should have developed a sound mindset on this article which is data analytics and the auditor Now, just to open this article, Data Analytics and the Auditor, I would just first like to introduce myself. I am Kashif Kamran, and I head the online lecturer platform, which is known as Online Lecturers. And from this platform, myself and my team uh, conducts online ACCA classes. I am a lecturer for AA, AAA, and SPL, and I am currently working as a lecturer at the Tabani School of Accountancy, uh, which is a platinum approved learning provider of ACCA in Karachi, Pakistan. I am also engaged with ACCA Pakistan for the practice to pass session for the advance audit and assurance. And my engagement with ACCA Pakistan is since March 2018. And I just conducted my ninth consecutive uh, practice to pass session for AAA in March 2020. Uh, in terms of my teaching experience, it's now almost 13 plus years that I am into teaching the ACCA qualification. Now from my profile, uh, if any one of you wants to connect with me, uh, these are my social connectivity. You can join my YouTube channel. Uh, the link of my YouTube channel is in front of your screen. That's uh, youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. Uh, you can join my AAA dedicated Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash AAA by KK. You can also join my strategic business leader dedicated page, which is facebook.com SPL by KK for your for the updates on tech uh, tips and techniques. OK, now what exactly your examiner expects from you uh, from the article data analytics? Now, this is a published article, right? And I will be going through the relevant extracts of the article in my session today. But this is the article which is right in front of your screen, data analytics and the auditor. You can download this article from the ACC website, but I have just extracted some relevant material from this article, which is of utmost importance to students because every paragraph or every sentence written in the article is of no use. Uh, you need to find the most important things from this article, which can be examined. So I'll be exploring this uh, over my session today, but let's first go back 
and see what your examiner expects from you in terms of data analytics and this expectation of the examiner is given in the article and you should be very clear about that expectation because you never know that expectation comes to your exam paper in March 2020 exams. Now what are learning outcomes? Number one, your examiner expects from a student that a student should know to assess and describe. Assess and describe how IT can be used to assist the auditor. How can IT be beneficial to auditor? How can IT help the auditor? So as a student, you should have a journal idea about describing how IT can assist auditor, how IT can help auditor. And this is nothing unusual for a AAA student because you've, you're coming from a AA, a AA subject. And the AA subject gives you a very good understanding about how IT assists the auditor. You must have done the computer assisted audit techniques in the AA paper. You cannot deny that. And the computer assisted audit techniques you do in the AA paper is the first time a student of audit gets used to how IT assist the auditor, right? And recommend the use of computer assisted audit techniques. And the examiner says that you, you can recommend the computer assisted audit techniques, which you've done in the F8 paper, and the data analytics where appropriate. And data analytics is what you are learning in the AAA paper. And the computer assisted audit techniques is what you've done in the AA paper. So examiner wants a student to describe how IT can assist the auditor, how data analytics can assist the auditor. This is the article. How CAT, computer assisted audit technique, can assist the auditor. So the AA paper was telling you how CAT can assist the auditor. The AAA paper is telling you how data analytics can assist the auditor. And that is of more importance, right? That is very, very important from an examination point of view that you know how data analytics uh, assist the auditor. But if you have a carry forward effect of the AA and you know CAT and you know how you used to uh, apply CAT in the AA paper is of extra advantage. So that's number one, right? Assess and describe how IT can assist the auditor. That's number one expectation of your examiner. Right, I hope that's clear to all of you. Moving towards the next learning outcome. Uh, if you can just keep dropping your messages during the course of the session would be uh, highly recommendable. But obviously I will not be answering any questions. I will answer them later on my social channels. But currently the focus is just on the lecture. But just to assure that you're alive in the session, you can just keep dropping uh, replies to my question as in like yes and okay. So I know you are there and you're getting my voice. Okay, now the next thing. Discuss current developments in emerging technology. So as a student, the, the examiner wants you to discuss the current developments in emerging technology. And that's, that's where we are having a discussion today because data analytics is an emerging technology. So how has data analytics impacted the auditor? And how has this data analytics changed the audit industry, including big data and the use of data analytics and the potential impact and the potential impact the, uh, on the conduct of the audit and quality? Now, what if a question comes in the March 2020 exams and the question asks you, uh, explain the impact of data analytics on the audit or explain the impact of the data analytics on the audit quality. Now this, this can be a very potential question. So, so what if a question in the March 2020 exam look something like this? We can get a question like this, right? Number one, explain the potential impact of data analytics on the audit process and on the overall audit quality overall audit quality question mark 
and certain marks allocated and there are certain marks to this requirement now when you're reading this article uh, in the session today or back at home you should know from the article the potential impact the data analytics have on the audit process now all of you know what is an audit process right planning gathering evidence which is fundamental then then the review stage then the reporting stage but at least the impact of the data analytics on the planning process and at least the impact of the data analytics on the evidence process and on the overall quality how can the overall quality be enhanced through the data analytics coming into the audit process so try to explore these uh, answers when you start to read the examiner article and you will be getting the answers as i start to explore the article with you shortly okay number three in addition candidates are expected to have a broad understanding of what is meant by data analytics we know whenever a new article is tested in AAA examiner do even ask you to explain the definitions so what if the examiner asks you explain what is meant by data analytics so the student should know that so that sets another requirement of the examiner he says that the student should know to explain the term explain the term data analytics question mark and a fill in the blank marks so when you're reading the article you should also know how to explain the term data analytics you should uh, rephrase a definition of data analytics in your own words right i hope that's all clear to uh, all of you right if you can just drop in your messages like yes and okay so just to assure that my voice is going through and clear and secondly that you're understanding the perspective of this uh, uh, article by the examiner which is data analytics and the auditor okay the next one then you go back to the presentation again and it says uh, that in addition you should know what is meant by the term data analytics and how it may be used how it may be used in the audit and how it can improve the audit efficiency so that that's the same thing how it can be used in the audit what what impact what impact and how it can improve the efficiency of the audit how it can improve the quality of the audit how it can improve the process of the audit so that's one of the same thing so you should know what's the impact of data analytics on the audit process you should know what's the impact of the data analytics on the audit quality you should know how to describe the term data analytics and you should know how it can assist auditor how it can assist auditor and using the computer assisted audit techniques or data analytics where appropriate so one of the last question which can be formulated from the examiner mindset could be uh, explain how it can assist auditor how it can assist auditor that can be one question assist means uh, help right so how it can help auditor or the last question could be explain some procedures explain some procedures using data analytics or computer assisted audit techniques which can help auditor in process of audit an examiner has covered these uh, procedures in the article so examiner can even ask you to write some procedures because that's given in the article how can it assist you so these four questions and when you're reading the article you should explore the answers of these four questions then you are a good student and you're preparing yourself very effectively for exams in march 2020 but you read the article and you you don't know what's the potential impact you you read the article and you don't know what's the term you you read the article and you don't know how it assists the auditor or you read the article and you don't know the procedures then obviously you are a weak student so try to get the objective 
So is everyone sound on the objectives? So these are the objectives, right? Which your AAA examiner wants you to achieve uh, when you are reading this article through the read of this article. Right now, let's explore what's what's in the article. Now, when when I went through this article, uh, data analytics and the auditor, and uh, the headings, the headings which are used by the examiner in the article, this is how it looks like. The examiner has firstly defined what is meant by the term data analytics. So at least you can get to know the definition. What is the definition? How would you define it? So what's the definition of the term data analytics? Number two, the examiner is telling you the uses, the uses of data analytics. So that was the question of the examiner, right? How can IT help auditor? IT help auditor. So examiner is saying, if you read my article, it will give you an idea about the uses of data analytics. So how, I, how data analytics can be of help to auditor. Then how can data analytics be used by the firm? Again, that's the same thing. How IT can help auditor. So both, both can help you with the same perspective, right? Number two, number three, examples of the procedures. What procedures can you apply? And this could be very, very important for March 2020 exams that the examiner directly ask you the procedures given in the uh, article that explains some examples of procedures or give some examples of procedure. So you should read these procedures in the examiner article. Then what are benefits of data analytics? And what are the challenges of data analytics? So it's quite an exploring article and not a very difficult article. Definition, uses, procedures, benefits, and challenges. So this, this is the summation of the article. So if you read these six headings from the article, you will be wonderful. Now, under the six headings, what are you reading? And how are you reading is of much, much importance. So let's, let's explore each one, one of them through the article now. Now, this is the article, uh, which is in front of your screen. And I have mentioned very clearly, if you can see that uh, gray highlighted area, it says important paras to read are highlighted and are explained in this webinar for your guidance. So just, just look at this. So uh, at least from this webinar, you will get to know the important paras you are reading and the basic objective of reading them has already been defined in the first part of my webinar. Okay, now let's explore this article. You go down. This is all what I've covered. This is the objective, what your examiner expects from you. So I've already spent time off on this in my presentation. Now you need to start from here. What is data analytics? That's the first thing. Now, the definition of data analytics is not given in this paragraph. It's given in the later paragraph. So for me, the first paragraph is of no importance. But yes, the second paragraph is of importance to me under the heading of what is data analytics. So I have highlighted this paragraph in yellow. And I have written over this paragraph important para from here. So I, I am encouraging students to read this paragraph from here for your exam paper. Let's let's see what para, what this paragraph says. It says at at a basic level, data analytics is examining the data. So what's the what's the literal meaning of data analytics? The literal meaning of the data analytics is, is examining the data available to draw conclusion. So you can you can start to make a definition. It says at a basic level, the data analytics is examining the data available to draw conclusion. Which data? The data, the client data, the, the data which the client has provided you, the computer, the computer data, all, all in the soft copy. And you're using the data to draw conclusion. It, it's like analysis of the data, right? Analytics, analysis of the data. It says this isn't a new concept because auditor used to analyze the data in whichever form it was available. Now we know with the advent of technology, this availability of data has become more, more, and more. That is the term known as the big data. And with the advent of technology, the data has now become more computer-based rather than paper-based. So examiner says this isn't a new concept, but there are growing trends towards more integrated 
and more timely use of data. So the auditor is now focused on more timely use of data. So perhaps the data has become more uh, real time rather than more historical. So more timely use of data from multiple sources. So now because of the advent of the big data, now because of the advent of so much data being available about the company, not just from within the company, from outside the company, the auditor can spend a real good time on the analysis of the data. The auditor can spend a real good time on uh, utilizing the data from multiple sources to help inform business decisions. So he can take a good knowledge of business, right? So auditor can have a good knowledge of the business. The next line, the data used by companies is likely to be both internal and external and include both qualitative data and the quantitative data. This is often aided by the specialized software which may be developed to come to analyze the data. Now we know audit firms like PwC, like ENY, like KPMG, like Deloitte, they have their own capable specialized audit software which are now which are now being embedded with data analytics. So these audit firms use their specialized audit softwares uh, which are now embedded or now integrated with data analytics so they explore the data about the client over the internet and within the client information system so the data is not just the one which is available in the client information system it is also the data which is available over the internet about the client so it can be both qualitative data and quantitative data and that will really help the auditor in a better planning. That will really help the auditor in a risk assessment process. That will really help the auditor in gaining a thorough knowledge of business. Now, when you are conducting the audit of the company for the first time, data analytics can be a breakthrough for you because you can get so much knowledge of the business through data analytics and then the data analytics software will help you draw conclusions. The data analytics software will help you draw conclusions about the relevant information. Uh, and even the data analytics software gives you a visual presentation of the data. It will convert the data into pie chart. It will convert the data into graphical images. Uh, it will convert the data into more visual presentation so that you get to know the summary. You get to know the understanding of the key areas or the key aspects you need to focus on. So this paragraph in yellow is just telling you about that data analytics is about analysis of the data inside, outside, qualitative, quantitative, and just enabling you to draw conclusions. And this isn't a new concept, right? Because auditor used to analyze data, but the way you are analyzing data now is in a different manner. Right, then you get to the next heading of the examiner article. What are uses of data analytics? Now, I've already informed you the uses, so I'm not reading this paragraph. This is this is this to me is an uh, unimportant paragraph. So I'm not highlighted this paragraph because the uses are already discussed above. The uses is to analyze the data. The uses is to gain knowledge of business. The uses is to plan the audit, to conduct the risk assessment. So it's it's up to you. You want to read this paragraph or not, but I'm not highlighting this as an important paragraph to read. Then you get to the next heading. How can data analytics be used by the audit firm? This heading. And from this heading, the first paragraph is very, very important because the first paragraph gives you the definition of what is data analytics. So I have written over there definition for exam perspective. Now the IAASP defines data analytics. Now this is a definition coming from a professional body. It says the IAASP defines data analytics for audit as the science and art of discovering and analyzing patterns. So it says it's a science and art. So it's a science and art of discovering and analyzing patterns. So now you can rephrase that in your own words, right? So data analytics is the analysis of the information or data analytics is the science of analyzing the information or is an art of analyzing the information. Deviations inconsistencies now you can explore the data in so many ways right you can filter the data you can identify unusual things from the data you can find inconsistencies from the data 
you can find analytical procedures from the data so you can use the data in so different ways because it's not a paper based data right it's a computer based data and when the data is computer based and that data is integrated with your software your software can explore the data your software can discover the data your software can identify unusual patterns in the data your software can identify unusual behaviors in the data and then your software will give you a graphical image that these are unusual areas or these are deviations or these are inconsistencies and then that graphical image by your software will be a breakthrough for you and that that will become that, that will become your planning and risk assessment for the audit right so this is the definition given of data analytics by the IAASP you can just read through and then rephrase it in your own words then you come to the next paragraph which I have I have highlighted in three different colors because I believe this paragraph is a mind opener paragraph this paragraph says the larger audit firms and increasingly smaller firms utilize data analytics as part of their audit offering to reduce risk and to add value now wasn't your examiner asking you that you should know the impact of data analytics on the quality of audit wasn't your examiner asking you that you should know the impact of the data analytics on the process of audit so uh, uh, aren't we getting the answer for that now it says that the data analytics is being used utilize data analytics as part of their audit offering to reduce risk and to add value so data analytics can even re reduce your detection risk because through data analytics you are exploring the bigger data you are exploring so much data and because you're exploring so much data the risk of failure is going down the risk that the auditor fails goes down so the data analytics is helping you in reducing your detection risk because you are now uh, analyzing you are now probing much larger data which was not possible before the advent of data analytics or which was not possible before data analytics was integrated with your audit software then the next line in the orange bigger firms often have resources to create their own data analytics platform and the smaller firms can buy it off the shelf now we know the bigger firms like pwc like ENY, I think ENY has their software, or perhaps PWC have their software, which is known as Valo, V A L O, and they they have developed it. That's the specialized data analytics software they have. Now, the larger firms, because they have money, they have resource, they can develop their own softwares. They can uh, they can have a tailored made software, but the smaller firms can buy them off the shelf. Then then the line in the pink says. There is no one universal audit data analytics tool. That's that's important, right? So there is there one audit soft is there one universal data analytic tool? It says no. Because every firm has its own. PwC, ENY, KPMG, Deloitte have their own. And the rest of the firms have bought it from the market. So is there one data analytic tool? No, it's it's so that means every firm has a different competitive advantage. Every firm is using data analytics in a different way. So there is no one definition here of how deeply the data is being analyzed. So please read these two paragraphs which have gone off your screen and been highlighted. I've already included this article with my uh, uh, with my annotations. Uh, in my resource of the webinar so you can download from there so you will get the colored coded uh, article so you know okay these paragraphs are the one I need to read and rest not now the other important paragraph is here which I've highlighted in pink and I purposely thought that this paragraph is giving you something about data analytics and the quality data analytics and the quality I'm reading it it says for auditor, the main driver of using data analytics is to improve quality. So what, what is the main driver of data analytics? It says the main driver of data analytics is to improve quality. The main driver is to improve quality. 
let's see how it allows auditor to more effectively audit the large amount of data is it possible with data analytics to audit more larger amounts yes and and processed in the id system in a larger client now you're going to audits of bigger companies like amazon like ibm like microsoft like procter and gamble like unilever like nestle Just imagine imagine the data now you you used to do audit on a sample basis now technology is giving you a breakthrough that you can even analyze 100% data you can even explore 100% data within lesser time through through the advent of data analytics and through the advent of the specialized audit softwares which the audit firms have developed over time so next line says auditor can extract and manipulate data so auditor can extract the data and can manipulate the data and and analyze it by doing so they can better understand the client so it can help the auditor to better understand the client information and to better identify the risk and to better identify the risk data analytic tools have have the power to turn all data into pre-structured presentations now the best thing when you analyze data when you extract data when you uh, go through the data in in through like your software this this at the end of the day you get the graphical presentation at the end of the day you get the graphical image which is a summary which is so productive so see the computer is not just analyzing the data for you it's not just manipulating it's not just uh, extracting it but at the end of the day it's also making a report for you of the key aspects of the key uh, inconsistencies of the key issues of the key risk and that report is a self made report for the auditor which you can refer as a planning document which can really help you pace up the planning process so this paragraph in pink is basically guiding you about the quality aspects at how data analytics is being used as a main driver for data analytics for for the audit quality okay then you move further on the next page the other thing the examiner expects from you which which i read as very very important uh, because the examiner do test knowledge directly in the first attempt and you can get a question directly asking you give some examples of procedures using data analytics so know the procedures and these are procedures given i have highlighted them in green only four procedures you can see these procedures here 1 2 3 4 examiner is telling that how can data analytics help you in procedures now if if as a double a student you are familiar with uh, cat you might not be amazed here because if you know how cat was used the same way is the data analytics been used and almost like identical procedures number 1 it says data analytics because it's the software and it's the software which is analyzing the data and it is the software which is exploring the data so any data can be explored right whether it's a sales data or it's a purchase data or whether it is a payroll data or it's a capital expenditure data any data can be explored right so it examiner is giving you an example of the nrv testing it says you can test the nrv by comparing the last time an inventory was purchased with the last time it was sold just to see cost versus net realizable value when it was purchased what was the cost and when it was sold last time what was the selling price is the selling price lower than the cost because the auditor needs to assure that the inventory is valued at the lower of cost or nrv the estimated selling price so auditor can see the cost and the selling price data just to assure that the selling prices are higher than cost but if he finds instances where the selling price has been like at a break even or the selling prices are below cost it it can create a risk for the auditor that the inventory should be some some uh, elements of inventory should be valued at the lower of cost or nrv so you can compare last time the inventory was purchased with the last time it was sold now who is doing that comparing the audit software 
your your specialized audit software when when the audit software is interacting with the system the audit software is exploring the data the audit software is exploring the data that when was the last time the inventory was purchased and when was the last time the inventory was sold and when it was purchased what was the cost when it was uh, sold what was the selling price right so it's helping you with the nrv testing so you can learn this procedure then secondly is the analysis this is typical analytical procedures analysis of revenue by product and region analytical procedures can become so good with data analytics you can have a deep analysis of uh, revenue revenue by country revenue by region revenue by product revenue by customer you can have uh, so much details that which customer is generating more revenue uh, which region is generating more revenue or which product is generating more revenue and you can focus on them you you can have a more specific uh, analytical procedures you can have more deep inside analytical procedures rather than just comparing the current year revenue with the last year revenue you can you can break the revenue into so many segments just just because of your software otherwise it was humanly impossible number 3 matching which is normally known as a substantive procedure we do matchings we do match the purchase order with a good receiving note but humanly it's so difficult and we do it on a sample basis but computer can do it on 100 percent basis the computer can help you match the computer can help you match purchase orders with invoices and payments and if if for an order there is no invoice you can ask management why or if for an order there is no if for an invoice there is no payment you can ask management why so you can find the trail the trail the order the invoice the payment if that is complete that's good if something is broken ask management if something is broken the computer will identify it as a exception there is an invoice but there is no order this will be identified as an exceptional item there is a payment but there is no invoice the computer will identify this as an exceptional item so see how how your substantive procedures are becoming more rigorous do you all understand the rigorous element here in your substantive procedures you can explore 100% data there is no need of a sample and you're exploring 100% data and your substantive procedures are becoming more easier for you is is that thought process clear to all of you who are who are participating into this live webinar and the last one it says segregation of duties so when you look at the segregation of duties it's it's like a test of control the the first three were basically the substantive procedures and when you look at the last one it's like a test test of control because you're looking at the system so the last one because you're looking at the segregation of duties it's a test of control now you can even see the logs in the system because whenever anyone log into the system by typing its username and password so you know how many people log into the payroll system if only one person is logging into the payroll system that means one person is responsible for the payroll but if if you can see log of three people four people five people who log into the payroll system then then that means there is a segregation of duty within the payroll system so uh, the computer system do maintain the login the login of the people and in what time have they logged in so the computer system maintains the log of the people logging in and at the time the logging in so that log can really help the auditor to identify there is a segregation of duty but in one month or in two months or in three months he only see mr a logging in to the payroll system then that means only mr a is uh, exploring the payroll or mr a is only responsible for payroll but over a month he sees mr a b c logging in so he at least that means there is a segregation between a b c three people are involved in the payroll system so that can assure the effectiveness of the internal control system too so these are four procedures given not difficult to learn and if the examiner ask you explain the procedures give examples of procedures you can give examples but you can also develop a mindset that 
uh, NRV testing can be done through uh, data analytics. Analysis can be done, matching can be done, test of controls can be done. So the computer can do anything, right? Uh, and the good part of the computer is no sample size because it, it, it will be done over a larger data. So computer can identify inconsistencies for you. For example, um, for, for example, for sales, uh, in a sales, there is a debit, but there is no credit. Or, uh, for, or, for, or for receivables, you, you find a receivable, but there is no corresponding sales. So the, the system can identify unusual data for you, the debits and credits. The system can identify missing debits for you. The system can identify missing credits for you. So that unusual or just uh, the one we say exceptional reporting, the exceptional reporting can become easier. So this paragraph is important, right? From an examination perspective, then few of the last paragraph, benefits of data analytics. You should learn three to four of them, not all of them. I've written over here, just three to four benefits would be good because the examiner can ask you, explain the benefits. So you should know three to four benefits. There is a long list of benefits given. You can explore through the benefits of data analytics. I hope over the session you are becoming familiar with data analytics and the help, the benefits, which can really help you in extraction of uh, the answer. Benefits. So easy. Increase business understanding. We've gone through that, right? The data analytics helps you with increased business understanding. Number two, it helps you better with better focus on risk because the data analytics will give you the reports, the graphical images, and that will give you a better understanding of the risk assessment. It increases consistency uh, um, across the group audits because if all the group auditors are using the same technology, the same data analytics, it will assure that because the group audit is a very complex exercise and with technology coming into the group audits and every auditor in the group is using the same technology, it can be wonderful for a group audit. Firstly, the group audit will complete within less time. Secondly, because group audit is complex, so the element of complexity will be overcome by the computer systems and it will be more interrogative group audit because you can you can you can be more interrogative into the complex structure into the subsidiaries and the associates so you can be more exploring and you can spend time on the core areas in the group audit rather than you're spending time on the non core areas in the group audit so it increases consistency across group audits because it's complex number 4 it increases efficiency obviously you can process you can be so quick you can even verify 100% data. So efficiency is one of the benefit of data analytics. Right, I've highlighted the green statements. If you can just learn them, that's wonderful rather than you're learning the full black statement. Another benefit, the data, the data can be more easily manipulated. You can manipulate the data, you can twist the data, you can, uh, you can break the data uh, to understand it to analyze it. So analytical procedures or analysis of the data becomes so easier with data analytics. And the last one, it increased fraud detection because you're so skeptical, you're analyzing the data, you're breaking the data, you are investigating the data. So perhaps detecting a fraud becomes more easier for auditor. So these are the list of benefits. You just need to learn at least four of them so that you, if the examiner asks you, explain the benefits of data analytics. So you can, you're capable of explaining four into like a paragraph form. And the last thing from this article is the challenges. Because data analytics is an emerging issue. So obviously uh, there must be some challenges, right? Uh, new things don't come without challenges. So let's see what challenges can be to the audit firm of uh, data analytics, because so far uh, we have just spoken in favor of data analytics uh, and in terms of how data analytics can be beneficial and helpful to the auditor. Now, again, just like benefits, you should know three to four uh, challenges. So you can have a list of three to four challenges and uh, 
be prepared to write them in your exam paper if the examiner asks you what has explain some of the challenges uh, for the audit firm using data analytics. Now, again, I have annotated my uh, challenges into colors. Uh, the first paragraph have three colors, the green, blue, and orange, which, uh, which is three distinct points. Then let's first explore them. The green point first says, at present, there is a lack of consistency or widely accepted standards, even across firms and within a firm. There is no ISA on data analytics yet. So there is an absence of a standard. Uh, because we don't have a standard, so that means uh, every audit firm is using data analytics the way they want to. There is no standardization. That's the first challenge. Lack of standardization. There is no ISA, right? There is no ISA on data analytics. So till the time we don't get uh, ISA on data analytics, we don't know the scope of it. We don't know how to do it. We don't know what are the limits. So Currently, all the firms are doing it on their own and are defining their own boundaries. So that's the first challenge. Number two in the blue. At present, there is no specific regulation or guidance which covers all the uses of data analytics with an audit. This results in difficulty in establishing quality guidelines. Because again, there is a lack of rules and regulations on data analytics, and it's such an open area, so perhaps defining the guidelines or perhaps defining the standards or perhaps defining the yardstick of quality is becoming difficult. Now, one firm is using it in a different manner. The other firm is using it in a different manner. So there is no yardstick. There is no nothing can be comparable here. But when there is a standard, at least you can compare yourself with the standard. Then in the orange. It also means that the firm with resources to develop their own data analytics may have a competitive advantage. So the larger firms have an advantage over the smaller firms because the larger firm have money, resource, and we just discussed that, that they can develop their own software. They've, they've already developed, which gives them a competitive advantage over the smaller firms, uh, which is another challenge because there is no data analytic tool which, which we can say this is a standard data analytic tool. And the bigger firms have already dominated the market. And with the advent of the data analytics, their dominance of the market or their monopoly of the market is increasing many folds, which is also curtailing the business of the smaller firms. Now, then after, you can see there is a bullets and the examiner has covered so many issues, so many challenges. You just need to have three to four challenges. Even I've covered within the paragraph, the green, the blue, the orange were challenges, right? But then the examiner is saying there are other challenges like uh, data privacy and confidentiality is a very big challenge. Because you're exploring the client data. What about the confidentiality of the client data? Will, will the client be giving you permission? Will the client give, give you access to that much data? These are challenges, right? Uh, the future, the future will tell that. Will the client, um, will the client restrict you on the data? Will the client offer you every data? Will the client limit you on the data? So data privacy is a very big issue here because the client will be very much concerned about that. I cannot put everything on the table for the auditor. I need to have some limits because then the computer data means the real time data. So data privacy can be one issue. And when the auditor gets access to the data, the confidentiality is the second issue. So you can have two challenges in the exam paper, right? You can have one challenge as data privacy, and you can have another challenge as in like the confidentiality. Then the other one, uh, the, the other orange factors, uh, the next one is just the continuation of the first one, data privacy and confidentiality. Please read it on your own. Uh, then it says uh, completeness and integrity of the client data may not be guaranteed. Obviously, the client manipulates the data, whether it is a manual data or whether it is um, automated data. So the risk of integrity of the data, the risk of completeness of the data, the client can still conceal computer data from you. Uh, it's possible, right? So again, the auditor, when he's conducting data analytics, he needs to assure that there is a risk of completeness and there is a risk of integrity. So you can face challenges of integrity and completeness of the data as in like you face in a normal audit. 
there might be compatibility issues that the client uh, com client computer system and your audit software are not compatible because your audit software has been developed uh, on a different language or on a different platform and the client computer systems are developed on a different platform and there is no uh, there is a compatibility issue between the two platforms we know there are so many ways through which computer softwares are developed and if there are different languages used in the development of the computer systems, the, then the compatibility might become an issue. And the last one says, audit staff may not be competent to understand data analytics. A lot of, a lot of money has to be spent on training, and that could be a lot, lot of cost for the audit firms. If you are using data analytics, then you have to train your staff, and training can take a lot of time. Your staff needs to become used to computer because normally we know that as ACCA students, we're, we're not literate on computer. The computer literacy, the use of computer, how to use computer, it needs to be taught by the audit firm so that it the awareness of data analytics becomes more relevant for the staff. Right? You can go through the list. Uh, already, audit staff may not be competent is a challenge. Compatibility issues may be a challenge. Completeness and integrity of the data may be a challenge. Uh, data privacy could be a challenge. Confidentiality could be a challenge. Then there were so many challenges covered in this paragraph here. Try to make a list of three to four challenges, right? So that that's ending the article, right? This was the last heading from the article, Challenges of Data Analytics. Now, just for a minute, come back here and see this. Now, at the end of this session, are you able to define if i can get your quick answers with yes or okay what is data analytics have you saw that in the article can you rephrase can you rephrase your definition now on your register is that clear to all of you okay uh, what are users of data analytics now everyone is sound on the users of data analytics uh, and how can data analytics, how can data analysis be helpful to the audit firms? Is everyone sound on that? Examples of audit procedures. Have everyone got examples of audit procedures like NRV testing, analysis, matching, segregation of duties? What are benefits of data analytics? There was a long list. What are challenges of data analytics? There was a long list. So this is the article, which is an unexplored article. And if I just bring you back to my Word file for one minute, these are questions, right? Explain the potential impact of data analytics on the audit process and on the audit quality. I hope everyone is getting the answer for that. Explain the impact on the audit process. The impact is where? The impact is on the planning stage. The, the planning stage become more uh, refined the planning stage become more uh, thorough the planning stage becomes more thorough the planning stage becomes more deep investigate becomes more deep investigative so the planning uh, process uh, through data analytics becomes more refined thorough deep investigative more uh, more deep analysis which which can really be helpful in identifying uh, uh, risk uh, risky areas right the second process when you you're gathering evidence so the gathering evidence becomes a uh, hundred percent uh, use of sample uh, eliminates or even not hundred percent in use of sample eliminates when you're gathering evidence your you can gather evidence on a more larger population a more larger population your performing uh, performing substantive procedures and test of controls becomes more thorough test of controls become more thorough right we, we got all these messages right from the lecture today so what are potential impacts on the process of the audit so the process of the audit planning, the process of the audit gathering evidence are, are fundamentally 
changed. There is a paradigm shift as to how we used to do audit and how we use how we are doing audit now and in future. So impact on the audit process and and on the quality. Obviously, the quality will enhance because uh, because of so many things. The quality will enhance because of efficiency, because of uh, focus on risky areas, focus on risky areas, efficiency, and because of the reduction uh, in detection risk. Your detection risk will go down because of data analytics. And that all will eventually impact on the quality of the audit. So I hope you got the summary while I was reading through uh, the article. Uh, and this is just another summary, uh, which is just to help you out thinking what the question is asking you here. Now, all of you know how to explain the term data analytics. I'm not going down into it. Explain how IT helped the auditor and some of the procedures. You got procedures right from the article, four of them. Number one, the NRV. Number two, the matching. Number three, the analysis. And number four, the segregation of duty. The test of control, which was about the segregation of duty. Right. So I hope the session uh, must have helped you. And you are in a far better position now on data analytics. I hope now data analytics is a covered area, is a through area, and all of you can prepare it very effectively. Already the annotated article have been shared as a handout. You can download this handout from the handout section of the webinar. And uh, if anyone else needed, I can even provide it to you on the uh, on the WhatsApp group even. So you have the annotated article, you know which paragraphs to read, how to read, is everyone through and sound on that before I just exit from the webinar. If I can just have a quick feedback of your... Uh, on the overall uh, webinar, how was the webinar? There is a poll in front of you. If you can just drop in your comment, uh, just drop in your uh, vote. That has this webinar really uh, defined the parameters of how you should be going with uh, data analytics. You might having you might be having a blur view of data analytics, and this webinar must have helped you out. Uh, now I hope everyone knows how to read the article. Is that true? Is uh, everyone clear on how to uh, how to prepare yourself as per the objectives of the triple examiner? So I tried making this an open webinar. I'll be putting it on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook as well. So this, this disseminates to the entire AAA community. And all of you are having a great, clear idea on uh, the, the subject matter, data analytics and the auditor. Right, so this is just uh, a session to interact with you on data analytics. This is just a six, six, not even six pages. If you leave the title page and the end page, so it's like a five page article and you have to explore this article. And please remember, whenever a new article is tested, it is tested for knowledge. So examiner can directly ask you benefits, challenges, examples of procedures. What is the meaning of the term data analytics? So please be very sure on that. So uh, rather than you are regretting yourself sitting in the March 2020 exams, you're not sure will it come, will it not, but this is an unexplored area which can be possible uh, to come in your exam paper. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this uh, webinar at a very short notice. Uh, the recording of this will be posted and then I'll be sending the link through. Um, it's time to sign off. It's time to say you goodbye. Have a nice preparation for your exams uh, towards March 2020. And uh, uh, I hope you're practicing a lot for your exams. Uh, it's time to uh, say uh, goodbye to all of you. And thanks for participating in the live webinar at a very short notice. Okay, goodbye and Allah Hafiz.